to 3764. Elvis Presley Boulevard. Hit it, Elvis. You got it. Hey everybody, it's Elvis back on tour, coming to you from Shreveport, Louisiana. We're at the Hirsch Coliseum, where Elvis did three shows in the 1970s. He performed here on June 7, 1975. He did two shows before 11,000 fans. He came back on July 1st, 1976, and also performed before 11,000 fans. What's cool about this building, it's one of those buildings where Elvis performed also in the 1950s. What happened was, in 1956, on December 15th, Elvis was performing for the Louisiana Hayride, and by then Elvis had gotten so big that the municipal auditorium over on the other side of town could not hold that crowd. So they transferred the show over to here, and he performed at what was then called the Youth Center, and Elvis performed here before 9,000 fans. What's also cool about this, the words, Elvis has left the building, were said in this building for the first time by the announcer for the uh, Louisiana Hayride. So we came in here today, we documented the building, and we've got a very special video for you today. And as far as what Michael and I do, this was probably one of the most special days for Elvis back on tour with what we do. And we went inside and we documented this building fully. And we've got a special guest that's going to be waiting in there for you guys. And we can't wait to show you who it is. So come inside and let's take a look where Elvis performed. The Hirsch Coliseum opened in 1954 with a seating capacity of over 10,000. It is located on the site of the Louisiana State Fairgrounds. The Coliseum has a striking resemblance of T.H. Barton Coliseum in Little Rock where Elves performed in 1972. It was renovated in 2016 which included a new roof that replaced the original copper roof. Before we show you the dressing room that Elvis used, we'd like to first show you the hotel he used in 1975 and 1976. Okay, we're at the site of what was the Chateau Motor Inn when Elvis toured here in 1975 and 76. As you can see, it's now the Holiday Inn Express, and we want to come over here and we want to show you some archways. We had originally thought that the Chateau Motor Inn was torn down. It was not torn down, it was just renovated the main structure of the building, this was the Chateau Motor Inn, the part that you see here. And if you look down there, you can see the part that was added on. So when Elvis came here in 1975 and 76, and we're going to show you a little bit later where the car was pulled in for him to get it, uh, in. And then in the pictures, you're going to see those overpasses back there that remain obviously exactly the same. So but what we want to show you now are some archways that remain from the days when it was the Chateau Motor Inn. And we'll take you and we'll line up a photo in the rear of Elvis leaving this building. And you will see these archways. And back in the back of the building, when we show you the pictures, you'll see a partial archway back there where the two buildings join and they had to cut the archway out. So. We just wanted to show you this is the archway. This is how we figured out that the Chateau Motor Inn still remains, uh, but as you can see, it's now a Holiday Inn Express. All right, so we're here at the back of the hotel, and right here is where the door would have been for him to come out. You can see these arches are still here, but since Elvis was here, basically everything on this side of the brick has been added on. So unfortunately, the door that he would have come out is no longer there. But like I said, everything from here over was added on. And so it kind of covers the lineups of him getting into his car and going to the show, but the overpasses are still back there and the columns that were there are still there. So we still have a little bit of lineup to work with, but unfortunately, with the doors being covered since Elvis was here, we can't do photos of him coming out the door, but that is where he would have come out. All right, guys, we're here inside the Chateau Motor Inn. Uh, this would have been the service elevator that Elvis would have gotten off. He would have gotten off, come right through here. There's a picture of him taken right about here um, where he's shaking somebody's hand. And this door frame would have been uh, the frame that leads to the outside. So this would have been the inside, and then this would have been outside. All of what you see behind me was added on after Elvis was here. And you can see the original brick that was here before they started painting and covering over it. So he would have walked out here, 
And like I said, this would have all been outside. There was a little stairwell right here that would have led down a little hill and he would have gotten in his car. So this would have all been outside and you can still see some original brick right there and some pipes that led down the hill with the stairs. And as you can see, the wall kind of juts in right there. That's one of those arches that you see on the side of the building. So once they covered over that, you can't see it now from the outside except for a little bit. But that's part of that arch that you see in those photos. After a six minute limo ride from the hotel, Elvis would have arrived here at this door where, as usual, the car would have been pulled inside for security. All right, guys, walking through the corridor, uh, Hearst Coliseum, I was performed here 75, two shows, and once in 76. I'm getting ready to go to where the uh, part where his car would have come in, and he would have gone up, and I'll show you guys that right now. All right, so his car would have come in through here. It would have parked right here. It would have gone up these steps. And then right in here would have been his dressing room. All right, so an interesting thing about these dressing rooms is this was part of Elvis's dressing room and that wall wasn't there. Um, this kind of was added and this was one big dressing room. Um, they've kind of divided them to where the other side is like a storage for you know drinks and ice and all those kind of things. Um, but this would have just been one big dressing room. I'll go ahead and show you guys what the other side looks like. But like this would have been part of the dressing room as well. All right, and so here's the other part of the dressing room that I just mentioned. Um, the wall that we were just, we were just on the other side of that wall. You can see that blue door there. That was just one big dressing room that came all the way through here. And then Elvis would have gone through that door to get to the stage. Yeah. 
Those people in the back back there, I got to look about this big, right? How can you see back there? Can you see okay? Because I can't even see you. When I first started working in Shreveport, you know, I, I started working, this was my first job, as you know, probably know, in Shreveport. Yeah. On the Louisiana Hayride. I don't know if they still, do they still have it? Uh, when I started working down here today, I was about 19 years old. It was only about ago, seven years ago. A man from Memphis, Tennessee recorded a song on the Sun label. And in just a matter of a few weeks, that record has skyrocketed right up the charts. He's only 19 years old. He has a new distinctive style. Elvis Presley, let's give him a nice hand. We've been singing his songs around here for weeks and weeks and weeks. Elvis? How yes, are sir. you this evening? It's fine. How are you, sir? Are you all geared up with your band there to, to let us hear your songs? Well, that's all right, Mama. That's all right with you. That's all right, Mama. Just any way to do it. That's all right. It's all right. Now my mama, she done told me Papa done told me too Son, that guy, you a fool And wish she ain't no good for you but that's all right. The Shreveport Municipal Memorial Auditorium opened in 1929 and was dedicated to the servicemen of World War I. This venue hosted the Louisiana Hayride from 1948 until 1960 with many artists including Elvis, Hank Snow, Hank Williams Sr., Jim Reeves, George Jones, Johnny Cash, and many more who were starting their rise to fame, most likely due to the hayride. Elvis's first performance here was on October 16, 1954. Just a few weeks earlier, on October 2nd, he was not well received at the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville. After one of his first performances on the hayride, he was signed to a one-year contract for future appearances. His parents had to sign the contract because he was too young and did not meet the Hayride's age qualifications for artists to sign contracts. The Municipal Auditorium is virtually untouched inside and out, looking very much as it did when Elvis performed here. Some changes were made between 1994 and 2004 to make it more accessible to all guests and introduce something it never had before, air conditioning. Well, sir, to be honest with you, we just stumbled upon it. I mean, you we were... stumbled upon it. Well, you're mighty lucky, you know. Thank you. They've been looking for something new in the folk music field for a long time, and I think well, you've got it. We hope so. With the amount of history in this building, we will be doing a separate video on the Municipal Auditorium in the future, where we will dive deeper into our visit, so be on the lookout. As we mentioned before, we had a special guest toward the Hirsch Coliseum with us. We were thrilled to spend the day with Estelle Brown of the Sweet Inspirations. We took her all around the building and listened to stories she had from her time singing with Elvis. And as a surprise, we played the concert that took place inside the Hirsch over 45 years ago, on the sound system and let her go back in time. How was that? It's amazing. I'm just imagining it happening. You could see him up there, couldn't you? I could see it in your face. You could see him up there. I can just imagine. You had the best seat in the house, didn't you? Yes, you did. Maybe Ronnie Tuck, oh, but no, you could see his my, face. Mine was the better one. Be sure to join us on April 19th when we will celebrate Estelle's 80th birthday where we will post the entire video of our special day with her. Michael and I want to thank Tommy and Derek at the Hirsch Coliseum, not only for their hospitality but also for their knowledge of the building. We also appreciate the care they both took to ensure that Ms. Brown's visit was a memorable one. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe as well as follow us on all of our social media accounts using the link in the description below.